This is the Horse Radio Network. This is episode 324 of the Dressage Radio Show on the Horse Radio Network, brought to you by TotalSaddleFit.com and Uncle Jimmy's. Tonight, we have young rider Maddie Zepernick and then Carrie Wilson, who has started a GoFundMe page to help her compete at the USEF Young Horse Finals in Lamplight, Illinois. Reese and I will give you a Total Saddle Fit trainer tip on walk for pirouettes. This is Reese Hoppler Stanfield from Georgetown, Kentucky. And this is Philip Parks from Rockwood, Ontario, and you're listening to the Dressage Radio Show. All right. Hi, guys. Hi, Phil. How, how are we doing? <laughs> You're from a new place. Yeah, I moved. I know. It's cool. It's not Vegas cool. anymore. <laughs> yeah, yeah just... I know. That's why you weren't on the show last night. Last yeah. week. So oh, we're glad to have you back. Did you tell everybody that I was moving? I think we did. It was Glenn and I. I think Glenn did it. I'm going to blame everything we did wrong on Glenn. <laughs> he's not here to defend himself. Hi, Coach Jen. How are you? I'm doing wonderfully. Thank you very much. Wonderful. <laughs> we're glad to have you. Tonight is a technical challenge. Yep. So we're glad you're on tonight. Yes, I have my <laughs> fire extinguisher at the ready. <laughs> exactly. I love it. Well, it's nice to have everybody on tonight. So we have quite a fun show tonight, huh? Yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be busy. We've got a young rider. You know, we just wanted to kind of wrap up the the young riders you know finals that was a fun week for you guys in kentucky right it was and we had a junior so i i really wanted to get a young rider and i think everyone will love maddie she's so adorable and she really has has worked very hard to get back to young riders you'll hear her story about her mayor college game um two years ago and i actually uh you know was with her and went to the clinic so uh it's fun for me to see her go back and do so well at the finals so really warms my heart and she's got a great story and we have Carrie Wilson on uh she's competing with me uh next week at the Young Horse Finals in Chicago so um she started a GoFundMe account and I thought that was really cool and something I wanted to um share with everyone because it's, you'll see there's applications, uh, for, you can use it for anything. So, um, and it's a good way to get people to help you in any way they can to get wherever you want to go. If that's and it's, and it's a great way for people to get involved with dressage and dressage trainers and, and all kinds of aspects of it. And, and, uh, we know it takes a village to, uh, to get a horse just to any kind of championship. So that's, uh, that's a fun idea. Yeah, exactly. So I hope everybody enjoys that for sure. So just in the news, I want to talk about Endel Otz and his successful um, rides at the World Young Horse Championships in Verdun that just uh, finished up this week. He was riding a uh, Hanoverian gelding, Lucky Strike, that he owns with his father. He made the five-year-old World Final Championships after qualifying that's over cute. two days, and which put them basically in the top 15 in the world. So that's uh, really exciting. And he took... Uh, he took a six-year-old, a six-year-old to the finals, or not to the, to to the young horse championships, but he didn't take it to the finals. It was a, it's an Oldenburg gelding, owned by Canadians Gene and, and Gary Vanderplog, and the the pair scored seven point six for eleventh place, but not enough to get them to the the finals on Sunday. So, two awesome horses, a great uh, American rider, one Canadian horse. That's a great story, and uh, uh, congratulations to Andalots. Yeah. And he's, yeah, and he's coached by Evie Strauser, who's Canadian. So there's lots of them. There's all North kinds America of ties. Yeah, there's that. all kinds of yeah. Canadian American ties in there. So I think these are going to be really successful horses for, for America and Canada. And, uh, you know, look out for these pairs when they, when they compete in North America. Exactly. Well, right after this commercial break, we're going to come back with Maddie Zepernick, and she's going to talk about her journey to Young Riders this year. <laughs> Uncle Jimmy's Hanging Balls and Licky Things help combat stall boredom by providing your horse entertainment in the stall, while at the same time providing them with much-needed minerals and nutrients not found in other treats. Uncle Jimmy's has training treats covered, too, with Uncle Jimmy's Squeezy Buns. Every deliciously soft, squishy treat is individually wrapped for freshness, so your pockets won't get gummed up. Ask for Uncle Jimmy's Hanging Balls, Licky Things, and Squeezy Buns at your local tack and feed supplier, or you can go online to uncle-jimmies.com. Well, we are so excited this evening to have Maddie Zepernick on from Region 9. Maddie, welcome to the show. 
Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Oh, you're doing a great job tonight. It's one of those nights where it is the chestnut mare of Skype. Um, it's not working. You've been very patient, so thank you so much. So talk no to problem. us about Winchenza, your wonderful mare. Winchenza is 12 years old this year. I've been having her for about four years. And um, we kind of had a rocky, we've had a good experience, a good four years, but we've had some rocky moments. But um, I just went to Young Riders Worker this past year, and we had an amazing show, and she was so good and held up with the heat, and um, it was just a great week overall. Excellent. So now, two was it two years ago, you had quite a difficult time here in Kentucky. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yes. Um, two years ago, Winchenza, we were really good for the first. It was a team testing individual test. We placed high, and we were doing great, really well. And um, the freestyle day, we qualified for the freestyle. I think it was the top 12 that qualified. And um, I woke up that morning, and we got to the barn, and she was sprawled out on the ground, just, like, pawing and throwing herself down, like, colicking really severely. And so um, we just took her out of her stall and walked her as much as we could and tried to keep her in the competition and gave her gas regard, and um, she just wasn't getting any better. And she was well, she doesn't really have a history of colicking, so we were a little bit confused and overwhelmed and didn't really know what to do. And... Um, there was a vet from Hacker that was there that helped us a lot and um, gave her banamine. So then we were out of the competition, but we just wanted to try to save her life. It was really severe. So um, we took her over to Hacker across the street, and um, she actually was on the table having surgery within half an hour. So that was a really hard experience, but we ended up learning from it. And she recovered great, and she went down center line that next year. So, um She's just such a strong horse with a very strong heart, and she's very courageous and one of the few that is able to come back from those types of extreme surgeries. So I'm very thankful. <laughs> yeah, it's true. So Tasha, how did you sort of get her recovered from the colic? Because I know she stayed in Kentucky for quite some time. So what was your plan to sort of get her back to competition after such a severe colic? She um she stayed in Kentucky for about I guess it's three or four months. It was till like mid October, and then she came back. And actually, whenever she did come back, she was able to go back to work a little bit. And actually, she ended up having another surgery at the end of November. So that wasn't good. But um she had it actually where I live in Lafayette, Louisiana. She had it at our local vet center. But um, after that surgery, we just kind of I think we gave her four four or five months off. And um, just, like, slowly brought her back to work, like, walking and then, like, just warm-ups. And then um, I had a – before she called the second time, I had a plan to be able to do Young Riders that next year. Like, I was being super optimistic about it. But then it just wasn't a good situation for her. And we gave her a lot of time to recover and rest. And we've just been balancing her diet. And um, now she's on a no-hay diet. So we've changed a lot of things. So she hasn't really called severely since then, luckily. But um, I found so a no hay diet. Yeah, tell us Correct. what, what is it? I've never heard of no hay diet. How does that work, and what do you feed her? Yeah, it's interesting. Um, we didn't really know what to do at first, and then the vet suggested just doing anything that helps. So um, she doesn't get any. She used to be on all coastal hay, and now she doesn't get any hay at all. So we give her, um, we divide her meal into meals into four, and she gets chopped alfalfa like super wet. And then her grain, she just gets plain um, equine senior with bran. And she gets both of them, like, really soupy so that everything is super easy to digest. And, and then she's on grass, too. Yeah. Got it. Well, that makes so sense. And, and I know in the coastal hay, I know, can be kind of difficult for horses to digest. But like you said, that's, exactly. that's the hay that you guys have. That's what you feed um, in yeah. Louisiana. That, so that makes sense. Excellent. So talk to us a little bit about your journey, you know, sort of once you got a rehab, what was your journey like um, this year? Um, well, we always kind of had to have her, like, best interest in mind in every situation. Like, if the show was really hot and we kind of, we just had to, like, give her fluids beforehand and be, like, really cautious. But um, this season in Wellington, we did our qualifiers and we came home and um, we had to do, like, one or two more. And so we were lucky enough to qualify for Young Riders. So, um, and then we went in July and we had an amazing team. And I love all the people on my team. We um, had the same exact team two years ago, juniors. 
So it was great to be with the girls that I know and everything like that. So it was a blast. It was such a fun week. So just tell us a little bit about the show and how your rides went and some of the things maybe that you were focusing on and 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 how that worked out for you. Yeah, of course. Um, the first day we were all just kind of like, I think every one of us was nervous. We were all just trying to get our feet wet. And so um, the first day went really well. Um, when Chinsa, I had one mistake in my four. And so that was pretty costly. And then uh, she did a couple times in her walk. So we didn't get the highest score. But we ended up placing in the top 12, I believe. And um, our team ended up getting six. So that was good. We really had a lot of fun. And then um, we had an off day. And then our individual test, our test was a lot better. We improved upon all our mistakes. So I was really happy with that. And we qualified for the freestyles. And for the freestyles, I think that was one of the best tests I've ever written. She just felt so good. And she was so on my age. And whenever the music turned on, she was really just like sparkly and happy and expressive. And um, we were right on our music. So I think that was one of my best best tests I've ever written and we got fifth place so it was really fun that is super so Maddie tell us about your freestyle what music did you choose for you and Lincenza my freestyle was kind of like patriotic like it starts with like kind of world war one music like there's a lot of like banging and clashing and like gunshots and then um the rest of it's like just like classic patriotic songs with like a little bit of a twist it kind of sounds like swing music almost but it's very patriotic and it's really a lot of fun. Oh, that's cool. That's awesome. So what's the plan for you and Vincenza next? Um, I think we're going to try for the U25 and see how that goes. I'm not going to push her too much just to keep her health in mind. And um, I have a young horse coming up, so that's pretty exciting. So um, we're just going to see how it goes. We're uh, schooling like full pirouettes and like I want stuff and, we're just going to try to get to U25 by, like, sometime next year. But we'll see. I'm just having fun in the process. <laughs> oh, fantastic. Well, Maddie, thanks so much for coming on the show. I just love you. are just a wonderful person. You're my fave. And you do such Thank a good you. job with Intenza. <laughs> and I just, have, you know, you. I've been been cheering you on through this whole, uh, through this whole process. It was such, it was so heartbreaking when she collected and, um, so I just thought your story was fantastic to share on how you guys, and you two have an amazing bond and, you know, to you guys come back and get fifth place in the individual was, I'm sorry, in the freestyle was amazing. I knew you guys would love Maddie. She's so adorable and she's a really hardworking young lady. And I'm glad that we were able to sort of highlight her story. And I hope that helps other people that have bad injuries that, or colleagues or, or surgeries to get their horses back and, and achieve their goals. So now we're going to move to Carrie Wilson. She's competing with me next week uh, in Chicago at Lamplight. And I hope you enjoy her story on how she plans to get to Lamplight with her horse that she bought as a two and a half year old. Well, this evening, I am so excited to have our friend Carrie Wilson on the show. Carrie, welcome. Thank you. I'm so glad to be here. Thanks for having me. Well, Phil and I know you from the Young Dressage Horse Trainers Conference, and we always, you know, enjoy your company. And I am so looking forward to hanging out with you next week at the six-year-old Young Horse National Finals. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. And congratulations to you, too. I'm really, really excited to finally be a participant and not just <laughs> there watching. So I'm very excited. Me too. There's something when you get that invitation, when you're, you've been working towards something, it really is such an exciting event. So tell us about your horse. Yeah, so um, she's obviously six years old, and she's a Hanoverian by Bugatti out of an old mare, so she's Hanoverian and Dutch. I, um, I've had her since she was two and a half, um, so I brought her along myself, which is even more rewarding um, and I've done all the training with her and it's kind of fun to bring my own horse along. Um, and this is the first year that I've really actually campaigned her. Last year I just showed her once, um, just to make sure she could go to a show and behave herself. But, um, so it was really exciting year. We did, um, just thought we'd try the six year olds and see how it went. And it was a lot of fun and she seemed to you know, do pretty well at it. And so here we are, qualified for the six-year-old. So, Carrie, I, sorry, I was just going to ask a little bit about, for the listeners that don't know, 
Um, what does what does the six year old test sort of entail? Yeah, so it's it's really comparable to a third level test. There is shoulder in and trot half pass, um, fly, single flying changes. There's no can or half pass, um, but they definitely need to be able to show the ability to collect and go forward, lengthen, you know, or, well, yeah, for medium and extended. Um, but I think it's pretty comparable to a good third level test. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's very, you know, it's, it, 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 there's a lot of elements of third level throughout the whole test. Um, mm-hmm. so, t- so tell us, how did you qualify? What was your plan for the season? Well, my plan was I got an early, for, for us in Region 2, an early start was um, early May at Lamplight um, because I was up north all winter. I didn't spend any time in Florida, so that was my first show. And then my second qualifier was in June, and then I was hoping to get a third qualifier, hoping to get be able to drop my first score. And then the show that I thought was going to be a qualifier ended up not being a qualifier. So being my first time around doing the actual, actually trying to qualify a horse, I didn't realize this show was always a qualifier in years past at Waterloo in July. And this year it wasn't. So then I was stuck with just two scores because otherwise it was too far. It was, I mean, there's nothing anywhere close. Um, I mean, within 12 hours, there was no, nowhere to go to get a third score. So I was just hanging on by the thread with two scores. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and that is, yeah. that is true. I mean, we, we, I'm sorry, Phil, you know, we, we dealt with the same thing. You know, it was, it was, uh, you could sort of qualify. We qualified in Florida, but then once I got to Kentucky, it was the same thing. Like the shows were really far away. And, uh, you know, I just, I just felt. You know, my guy's a pretty good traveler, but I felt like it was better to not, you know, to qualify in Florida. So I got it done, and he had to qualify, like, on a Sunday and a third day. Uh, and mm-hmm. it would be a tough week for him, but I thought, you know, it's better it's a tough week now than have to drive 12 hours, which is a yeah, lot exactly. on the young girlers. I think we're so at a huge sense. disadvantage in Region 2 um, if you're not in Florida, because otherwise you have to travel really far. Um to get enough chances, you know, at qualifying, at, you know, getting scores, I think. Because the, there was the last qualifier in Region 2 was the middle of June. So there was nothing for the last month of the qualifying time frame. Yes, that's right. You know, it, is, it is definitely a challenge. So, Kevin, one of the things we're, we saw on Facebook today that is that you set up a GoFundMe account. Can you kind of talk to us a little bit about what that is and just tell us what that is? Yeah, so my trainer, um, Fred Weber, gave me the idea um, to set it up because it's a way that people can contribute or support you, um, and you can reach out really to people all over the country um, really quickly. And it's just so you, you set it up. It's really easy to set up. You just go online. They don't need any of your personal information um, to set it up. And you just write like a little paragraph about yourself. It's great to have a cute picture. Um, and then like I've just been spreading it through Facebook to, you know, on my page and people have been sharing it all over the place. And it's just a way for people to support you for people to get involved, um, you know, and, and they can feel like they are part of it too. So, um, and for me, because it's my horse and so it's all the expenses are on me. Um, it was just a way to try to lighten the burden a little bit of the big expense, you know, because it's a big trip. It's, um, you know, a long time to be gone. Also having my coach come out there, you know, to help me and support me. Um, I wouldn't want to go without him. So I have to pay his way too. So it's just a good way to, you know, um, kind of ease the expense a little bit, but also to involve a lot more people and, and just feel the support, you know, from so many people that believe in you and, and are excited for you too. Yeah. I think this has been an awesome thing. I've seen a few, you know, for young riders that, uh, you know, that don't come from super wealthy backgrounds and, 
Mm -hmm. um, and, and dressage for sure, we need you know quite a bit of money just to just to ship the horse and this sort of thing. So, and I think there's no there's not really a minimum contribution, mm -hmm. uh, is there? No. And no, so you not. know, a lots you... of lots of people give a little bit of money, and then all of a sudden you have enough to go to a big show like this. So, um, I think it's yeah. an awesome idea and an awesome website. And I mean, people do it for all types of things, not just for riding, but for you know, somebody yeah, wants to for health issues or yeah, all sorts of stuff. Mm -hmm. So yeah. So, so when you go, how do you how do you get to Carrie? If we wanted to donate to your fund, how do you how how would we get there? Yeah. So. Um, you can go on my Facebook page, either Carrie Wilson or Wilson Four Horses, and there's a link. So if you just click on the Help Carrie and Bella Get to Lamplight, um, there's a picture and a link, and you just click on it, and it takes you right to the fund, GoFundMe page. And then um, you just click on the, the um, tab that says Donate, and then it just walks you through it, and you can make a contribution right online, and it's really quick. and and easy. Well, I think it's a cool, it's a really cool idea. And like Phil said, I think um, it's, it, we can use it for all things. And so if you want mm -hmm. to get to a clinic or a show or, or whatever, where you want people to, um, you know, donate, I think it's great. I, I, I've done a lot of fundraising for, for my endeavors over the years. And it, I just found that this is a really cool way to do it. So I think it's great. And I can't wait to see you there next week. We're going to have quite a great time. It's going to be super yeah. fun. Thank you. I'm well, really excited too, and I'm so glad you're coming as well. It's going to be fun to have know? a beautiful there that I know a little bit and, you know. <laughs> exactly. I love it. Everything. Yeah. You got it. Well, Carrie, thanks so much for coming on the show tonight. How do our listeners find you online? Yeah, so um, I've got a wilsonsfourhorses.com is my website. And then also on Facebook, Wilson Four Horses has a page. And then you can, my email too is just carriewilson11 at yahoo.com. So um, you can connect with me on any of those ways. Thanks, Carrie, and I'll see you next week. This week's dressage training tip is brought to you by Total Saddle Fit, home of the shoulder relief girth at totalsaddlefit.com. Well, for our Total Saddle Fit trainer tip of the week, we thought that uh, Reese and I would do it because she has just been working on uh, her six-year-old test and uh, there happens to be walk pirouettes in it. So uh, we thought we'd talk a little bit about, you know, training walk pirouettes. It's the bane of, of the, you know, <laughs> of the second level tests and, and, and they, and they go them all the way into the pre-St. George. So, um, you know, Reese, maybe get us started about, started about, about walk pirouettes. Yeah. So they are in the six year old next week, um, that we have to do. The good thing is the judges are a little more lenient about the walk pirouettes, um, in the six year old test. At least that's what I've been told. Fingers <laughs> crossed about that. <laughs> no, actually, uh, my my horse does quite nice walk pirouettes, and he's really obedient. That's one of the nice things about my guy um, is he really does try pretty hard to do the right thing. Um, so, but one of the things that we found uh, in training last week, um, like we shared with everybody, I had the opportunity to go uh, for a week. We called it camp, adult camp. My mom and I went to Hasler Dressage and really had a ball. Um, just training and really looking at the six-year-old test and breaking it down and what was the best way to sort of prepare my horse for next week. Um, and so, of course, the walk pirates came up, and they really are a testament on how the horse really listens to the aids. And I think that's really why, like you said, though, they're in second level to pre-St. George. Um, and they are, they're really difficult for trainers to teach. Um, but one thing that we found with my horse overall if he really doesn't want to carry, and, and I do think that this is a, it's a six-year-old, he's a young guy, but he also is getting a lot more strength, and it's difficult for him to carry on the hind leg. Um, and so one of the things that he wants to do with his inside hind leg and the walk pirouette, uh, again, and I think this is very common, he likes to step it out. Instead of bringing his inside hind leg underneath his body, he likes to step it out. And when he steps it out, then we lose a lot of balance. So the biggest thing that we've been working on and we're working on in general is he teaches inside hind leg sort of with the idea that 
underneath his body so I can keep a nice connection from my inside leg to my outside rein, and then he doesn't fall out also the outside shoulder. So one of the things that we really did was we worked on just quarter pirouettes um, in that he stays underneath and active with his, his especially left hind. That's actually my harder one, um, is that you just ride a walk pirouette, and when the horse steps really, when he was stepping really wide, we would activate the inside hind leg and push the walk pirouette out. So not go for the full 180 degrees. We just went a quarter of that way. So we would just walk down the um, middle of the arena because walk pirouettes are uh, in the middle of the arena. We'd walk down, you know, between E or V or whatever letters you want to think. And we would ride an active quarter turn and then straight out. And a lot of times in the walk pirouette, you'll show your horses, they don't really stay connected. But he, he knows what he's supposed to do. So he'll start turning for the 180 degrees. And so when you just ride a quarter, you're able to sort of catch the horse and walk forward just so that they stay a little bit more on your aid. So this is super helpful for my horse. Uh, and it's also really good application for him. He does the same thing in the half pass. And again, the walk throw and the half pass are, are related in a way. Um, and he'll do the same thing when we start a half pass. He'll stick really wide and lose his balance and instead of staying underneath himself. So we actually worked on that quite a lot. Um, and now he, after walking out, and you can even make two steps and maybe not even on the full quarter and walk straight out. So again, your your goal is to keep the horse active and underneath himself and listening to my aid so that when I do the full quarter, um, full half turn, um, he stays really sharp and quick and active with the hind legs. So um, that is my tip for walk through it. What do you think, Phil? Nice. That sounds good. I think, you know, one thing I would add to that is that um, with some horses, when they turn a little bit too much like that, that I would uh, I would do the quarter turn and then a little leg yield out, actually. So you push them mm-hmm. to your inside and then push them right back to your outside rein a little bit. So, um, you know, some horses disconnect from the outside rein and they turn their shoulders too much. And, and so just exactly what you're saying, but then and then, and then leg yield a couple steps and then try and come one or two steps in the pirouette and then leg yield out a little bit, you know. But I thought just about, you know, bringing it right back to, you know, how to begin this this idea of walk pirouettes. You have to have um, a little bit of rhythm control in your walk. You have to be able to um, to collect the walk a little bit and, and make it longer. So that's how I start with every student is to say, you know, can you make a little bit longer steps in, in the walk? Can you make a little bit shorter steps in the walk? And just work a little bit there or on the transition from walk to halt in and out of that to create the smaller steps. And then, um, and then the next prerequisite is to be able to do um, uh, travair and walk along the wall. And then the third thing is uh, is to do travair on a on a circle in in the walk. So control of the strides and then control of the hindquarters and the shoulders independently. So you have to have all that stuff. You know, a little shoulder in, a little travair, a little big walk, small walk before you ever even start thinking about the you know the walk pirouettes and i think it's super important that if you're going to have if you're going to um, spend some money for a lesson do it to help you with the walk pirouettes because i think a lot yeah. of people have heard that you do not want to screw up the walk right and this is this is where it happens mm-hmm. is in you know walk pirouettes as the horses you know as you try and collect them when they get tense then the walk gets uh unclear and they go you know um, to all different types of uh, rhythms and problems. And so you have to, it's very, very easy to sort of screw up the rhythm and then you have, then you have big problems to fix. So, um, you know, spend some money on for some eyes on the ground to help you with this for sure. So, um, you know, as oh, we I talk totally about, agree. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, and then what I do, you know, if I'm starting in the horse feels pretty good, then I start a big 20 meter circle in Traver. And then I start just gently day by day taking the circle a little bit smaller and feeling like I have control of the shoulders, feeling like I have control of the, the hind legs and have control of the rhythm. If I lose any one of those things, then I just go, I stop the travair immediately and, and I work on that. You know, I go back out to a bigger circle and I work on that until it feels good, right? Um, again, rhythm, well, rhythm, I rhythm. Think, yeah. yeah, and I think all of these exercises are super important. You know, and how do the horses react after eight? I think yeah. that's another big one. You know, yeah. you'll find like, I really found like, whoa, my horse is way slow off my left leg. And I've actually right. started to slow off my right leg. But when we really started breaking these down, you know, he, laterally, he was pretty slow off my left leg. So 
it was really good because you're kind of slow motion is the wrong word, but you don't have the the motion of the trot of the canner. So you can actually feel a little, some few things that are going on that maybe you didn't know that they were going on. So that was really good when I. Yeah, it's, it's, you can really feel the details when you break it down and walk, right? And Mm -hmm. what's, you know, and it has to be so good and so clean to do it. And and, in trot and in canter, it's actually, you know, trav air, shoulder, and, you know, this stuff is actually a little bit easier because, um, you know, the rhythm is so steady in the trot. It's just that one, two, the, the horse has a really hard time screwing up the rhythm in the trot. So you got that really, really nice one, two rhythm going, and then you, you're pushing the horse around. He has to stay in that rhythm no matter what. I mean, you want to be able to control the size of the strides, but it's hard for the horse to kind of screw up the rhythm. In the in the walk, it's so easy for the horse to screw up the rhythm and to get get tension problems and, and, and all, you know, all kinds of issues. So it's, I think the walk pirouette is one of the hardest things to teach. Not only horses, but riders, and and you know because it's so detail oriented that uh, you know it takes a long time. It's one of those things that you have to take your time with. And as soon as the horse gets frustrated or you're feeling problems, there's nothing you can do. You can just move on and do something else. Yeah. So yeah, and, no, and the so best true. horses are the ones that sort of allow you to push them around and ride them and and teach it to them because uh, you know even the horses that are a little bit too smart and learn things very quickly learn how to do walk pirouettes really wrong very quickly. You know, they try and do it for the rider and then all of a sudden there's, you know, spinning action or, you know, horse too fast or horse too slow. Oh, it's just, it's a, it's a bane of training. I really have a tough time. <laughs> and you know, yeah. funny, funny story. When I did my certification testing, um, they assign you an exercise and like, I just remember being like, please don't teach me, please don't walk pirouettes. And then they're like, and Reese, for your exercise, you're going to teach Walk I was like, oh, oh no. That's evil. That's evil. Please, God. <laughs> no, it was, yeah. it was, I, I mean, I was able to pass the exam, so I must have done okay, but oh, they're really difficult. So really? don't get, like you said, don't get frustrated. Just, you know, really think be detail oriented and how is my horse reacting off my legs, my feet, and my hands, and that should help a lot. So yeah. I hope that trainer tip helps. That's a great tip. And that yeah. my Walk Throughs are going to be great next week. <laughs> Well, if people have specific problems, they can always email us, and you know we've have we've had listeners send us a little video, and and we try to break it down, and and uh, you know help everybody with their their uh, you know training issues, and it's great for us to have something to converse about and to talk about because I'm positive that if you're having a problem, a thousand other people are having a very similar problem. This tip was brought to you by Total Saddle Fit, the shoulder relief girth that Reese and Philip both love. And here's why. The saddle fit solution you have been waiting for is finally here. TotalSaddleFit.com is proud to introduce the shoulder relief girth. This strategically shaped girth actually moves the girth line of your saddle back over one inch, thereby freeing your horse's shoulders from the saddle. Traditional girths pull saddles up against a horse's shoulders and often over the top of the shoulders. The shoulder relief girth's recessed ends allow for the billets to buckle into the girth farther back to give your horse unparalleled freedom of motion. We are so certain that your saddle will fit better and your horse will be more comfortable that for a limited time we are offering a 30-day, 110% money-back guarantee. If you are not totally satisfied with your shoulder relief girth, send it back for a full refund plus 10% of the purchase price. Don't wait. Order now for the best saddle fit solution available. At totalsaddlefit.com. Visit totalsaddlefit.com. Well, that was awesome, Phil. And uh, everybody, next week, uh, we are not going to be joining you. Uh, we're going to have a best of, so we hope you enjoy that since I'm traveling and um I think Jen and, and Glenn are traveling, so I hope you enjoy the best up. And we'll be back in a couple weeks, and we look forward to that. And you can find our show notes and links to today's guests on our website, dressageradio.com. Like us on Facebook, just search Dressage Radio Show. Follow us on Twitter at Horse Radio. My website is maplecrestfarmky.com, and my email is reese at horseradionetwork.com. You can find me at philipparksequestrian.com and my email is philip at horseradionetwork.com. I'd like to thank our sponsors this week for allowing us to put on a great show. And don't forget to check out all the other shows on the Horse Radio Network at horseradionetwork.com. 
Everybody, keep your heels down and your shoulders back, and we will be back at the beginning of September. Have a great rest of the month.